right so let me start today's class so we had finished up to little's law hmm. probabilistic form of little's law we had stopped here then we were about to start about mm1 queuing system and we had just started at poisson process so i will start with mm1 queuing system itself today because it's been quite a long time so let me start with the mm1 queuing system so let us start with this figure that we have here so as you know we have uh, one server in an mm1 mm1 queuing system and um, M here is representing the Markov uh, property of the arrival and the um, service processes. So the arrival distribution is basically following ex inter arrival distribution. Sorry, is following exponential distribution and the uh, service time distribution also follows an exponential exponential distribution. So here uh, it has been mentioned here that customers arrive according to a Poisson process with rate lambda. And the probability distribution of the service time is exponential with mean one upon mu. So we have uh, one server. Uh, we do not have um, any population size limitations as we all know that if it is MM1, then all other uh, it is only written as MM1 and nothing else is mentioned here. Then all other uh, values will be considered as their default values. So default values as in you will have no buffer or population size limitations. Uh, you will um, have the service discipline as FCFS. OK, so. Uh, this is what we are having as MM1Q. So now what we are going to look at is um, the arrival process. OK, so what we have mentioned here that the arrival process follows a Poisson distribution. OK, so uh, what is a Poisson process? All right. So we had talked about this. So a stochastic process AT such that T greater equals to zero uh, taking a non negative integer value is known as a Poisson process with rate lambda if it follows these three conditions. And um, the first condition being that AT represents the total number of arrivals until time T. OK, so AT represents the total number of arrivals till time T. And uh, the number of arrivals occurring in disjoint time intervals are independent. And the last one is that that the number of arrivals in any interval of length tau is Poisson distributed with parameter lambda tau. That is for all t tau greater equals uh, sorry tau greater than zero um, probability that a t plus tau minus a t is equal to n is given by lambda tau power n by n factorial times e power minus lambda tau for n equals 0, 1, 2 and so on. So I am very sure you are all aware of this part. This is the PDF for Poisson distribution. So um, I will go further from this slide. OK. So now before we start with Poisson uh, with the arrival process and MM1 Q etc. Uh, we need to just get to some more uh, properties of Poisson processes. OK, so first is that the inter arrival times are independent and they are exponentially distributed. OK, so when I was talking about, uh, you know, in two classes before this or one class before this, um, I was asking all of you that you know whether there is any link between Poisson processes and exponential distribution and I had asked you to go back and look at uh, Raj Jain's book. OK, on the distributions or any other book where you have, you know, these uh, distributions, different distributions and their properties. So here it is that the inter arrival times are independent when you are considering a Poisson process, the inter arrival times are independent and they are exponentially distributed. OK, so uh, if Tn is the time of the nth arrival, then. Tau n that is the uh, inter arrival time OK between Tn plus one and Tn. 
So tau n is equal to tn plus 1 minus tn. It follows exponential distribution with parameter lambda. Hmm? That is, uh, you know, about, uh, you know, the properties of exponential distribution. So from there you can get P of uh, tau n less equals s is equal to 1 minus e power minus lambda s. Okay, so that is one property that we are having. Then the other one that we are going to look at is that that for all t greater equals to 0 and delta greater equals to 0 by using Taylor series expansion of probability expressions given by the PMF of Poisson distribution, we obtain these values. So this seems to be a little something that needs to be done. So let me just go ahead and show you how it works. Hmm. So let's first, what just happened? Let's see. So what are we trying to find out here? Okay. The, uh, uh, So P of A T plus delta minus A T is equal to zero. Okay, that is what we are looking at. And uh, what is given here? This is equal to one minus lambda delta plus O delta. So this is given as it is equal to 1 minus lambda delta plus o delta okay so we have to see how this comes to this okay but what does this mean there's been no arrivals okay a t plus delta minus a t is equal to zero no arrivals probability that there are no arrivals is given by this value 1 minus lambda delta plus o delta. So how are we getting this value? What do we know about PDF? We have seen Poisson distribution, right? So we all know about this. Now, what is n here? n is 0. So put 0 here. So that comes out as e power minus lambda delta. Okay, so in terms of lambda, you are going to put lambda delta here. Okay, because this delta time instance we are looking at. Okay, so e power minus lambda delta is what we get from here. Now, you know e power minus delta uh, lambda delta, we can write from Taylor series expansion. How can we write it? We can write it as 1 minus lambda delta plus lambda delta whole square by 2 minus so on, right? By 3 plus so on. Okay, now look at these terms. This is plus. Look at these terms, okay? So delta is a very small value, right? Now, if you keep squaring it or you uh, put more further powers on that and in this expansion, you know that delta is going to get further, uh, you know, powers on it. So that means it will become further smaller values. OK, so that is like, you know, it, this, these values are going to become pretty less as it goes on. All right. So what do we do? We represent it with a very small value. OK, and we call it as. O delta. Okay, so what do we get now? So we get 1 minus lambda delta plus O delta. Same as this value. Okay, so this is how we get what is the probability that there has been no arrivals. Okay, in time within this time. Okay, is this part clear to everybody? Hmm. 
Okay, since there is nothing that is being said from your end, I will assume that it is clear. Now the next one. Next one is for um, uh, that there has been one arrival, right? That is P of A T plus delta minus A T is equal to one uh, and it should be equal to lambda delta plus O delta. Hmm. So I will just show you how to just get for this one also. So. OK, so we are looking at P of that is one arrival right? P of A plus. A T plus delta minus e T is equal to one. That is so what this will be equal to. So again, go back to this one. OK. So here what we will get n is equal to one. So lambda delta e power minus lambda delta. This is what you're going to get now. Now from here what you will get again Taylor series expansion you need to do lambda delta. So one minus. Lambda delta plus lambda delta whole square by 2 minus lambda delta whole cube by 3 and so on. OK, so now you need to. Multiply this Oh, this one begin. Uh -huh. So you need to multiply this. So again, if you multiply this term with the values which are here, again you will get square of these delta terms. I mean for the power of these delta terms starting with the square value of this. OK, so once the power increases, this value becomes very, very small and we can again consider it as O delta. So what can we write? We can write it as lambda delta plus O delta. O delta is a very small value here. OK, so let's see whether we are right here or not. Yes, so this is lambda delta plus O delta. So the probability that you have only one arrival at this point is lambda delta plus O delta. Uh, probability that you have more than two arrivals, two or more arrivals, sorry, um, is equal to O delta and this I will not do. I've shown you how to do this. So maybe you can get now that how to do this. OK. So yes. So that's what I was telling you that O delta is a very small value such that O delta by delta uh, tends to zero as delta tends to zero. OK, so uh, here we are having terms that involves delta with power that is more than one. So therefore it will become further small value. All right, so this is uh, the other property of Poisson processes. Now let's get to the other one. Achha, these two are very clearly given in Rajan's book. So I have um, just mentioned it to you and maybe in your uh, math classes, maybe you have done earlier in your uh, syllabus or in other courses that you know, if you merge two Poisson processes, the resultant will be Poisson and if you split a Poisson, the resultant will be Poisson. That is what we know. So now um, if you see the properties here that is merging of K where K greater or equals to two independent processes. OK, so merging of two or more independent Poisson processes into a single process will result in a Poisson process with a rate that is equal to the sum of the rates of its components. OK, so if the components, uh, if there are two uh, processes, independent Poisson processes that you are merging with rates lambda one and lambda two, then the resultant process will be a Poisson process and its rate will be equal to the sum of this um, its components that is lambda one plus lambda two. OK, so that is one property and another property is that if you split a Poisson process uh, into K greater or equals to two processes uh, with independent assignment of each arrival, it results in K Poisson processes. OK, so if you are splitting a process, um, into two or more processes, then again, uh, you know, uh, you will have K Poisson processes with that. 
So that is uh, the property of Poisson processes. So you have four different properties as uh, I have already shown you for Poisson processes. OK, so now um, let's get to this one. So this is for our service distribution. OK, so how the uh, services are being uh, served at the server. OK, so what do we know? We have already known that the service uh, time distribution follows exponential distribution. Hmm. So how can we put it? So time required to serve any customer follows exponential distribution with mean mu. That is if SN is the service time for the nth, nth customer, then P of SN less equals S is equal to 1 minus E power minus mu S property of exponential distribution. OK. Now, um, uh, as per also as per the property of exponential distribution, the service times will be independent of the customers and they will be independent of the inter arrival times. OK. So uh, exponential distribution, this is the third property. It has memoryless property. OK. OK, so what is what was the memoryless property? That is that if you have been um, in a state or you have been, if I give an example, that is if you have been waiting for uh, an event to occur for a really long amount of time or for delta amount of, or sorry, for lambda amount of time, uh, but how much more you have to wait for the event to occur will depend only on your current state and not on what has already happened or how much you have already waited in the past. OK, so this is like um, finding a taxi cab in the airport or near any uh, railway station or anything. OK, if you really just wait for a random taxi cab, uh, how much more time you have to wait in the taxi cab will be independent of how much long you have waited for. OK, so that is why uh, these um, kind of distributions, they are known as having memoryless property. And this is the way you write um, or you represent a system having exponential property. Uh, sorry, memoryless property. So that is P of X greater than A plus B given X greater than A. OK, is equal to P of X greater than B. So you can see here that is that given that your um, current state or you have, um, I mean, given that uh, your current state is more than A. So that means uh, you want to see that what is going to happen in the next instance that is A plus B, given that already you have waited for A time, that is X greater than A, then that is independent of what has happened in the past. OK, it will only be dependent upon the current state that is P of X greater than B. All right, so that is the memoryless property that we have for exponential distribution. And it is um, very helpful when you try to analyze systems such as a cube. OK, so. Uh, all right. So with. Uh, the memoryless property, we get to Markov chain formulation. OK. Um, all right. Hmm. So does anybody have any idea of Markov chain models? In the class. I'm sure some of you might have done something or at least have heard of Markov chain models. OK. Is there any answer to this question? Nobody has any idea of Markov chain models. OK, so um, basically if I have to in a very naive manner, if I have to say that what are Markov chain models? So. Markov, uh, the Markovian property, OK, any system that follows the Markovian property basically has this property of memorylessness in it. OK, so we have uh, these properties followed in continuous time distributions or even in uh, discrete time distributions. OK, so here 
in this situation, we are looking at the service time distribution, right? So we are trying to see that how many arrivals are there when t is greater than equals to zero. OK, so that is nt such that t greater than equals to zero. Now, since we are looking at the time here, we would say that OK, uh, it cannot be a discrete time distribution. It should be a continuous time distribution and therefore we can say that it is a continuous time Markov chain. OK, see, um, I will show you that what is this uh, Markov chain and all that. I will take another class um, on this. OK, where you will get to know that, you know, how to represent Markov chain. So basically what I'm trying to look at here is um, that, you know, at every point of time, the system is having a different state in terms of, you know, what are the different arrivals that are coming into the system. OK, there will be arrivals into the system. Uh, some jobs will arrive into the system and then they will be served and then they will go out of the system. That is, they will depart out of the system. So at each point of time, if you look at this system, you will see that it is having a particular state. The state can be that either there is an arrival, either there is no arrival or there is a departure. Right, so these are different different um, states that your system can get into at any particular point of time. OK, so when we say that, uh, you know, a system is basically kind of a Markov chain or following a Markov property. So Markov property, of course, is because of the memorylessness property that we have seen. And when we are looking at this or when we are representing something as a Markov chain, then we are basically showing that, you know, how its different states are um, or how the system is taking different states with change in time. OK, so you can see you will see actually I will show different diagrams also here as to how uh, it basically changes. So let me just get into this. Maybe you will get further uh, intuition on what it is and I will also take one more class on on this part again. I will again go through this part in a very different way. You will see. So now I'm looking at it from, you know, the inter arrival time distribution that is from exponential time uh, distribution. I'm showing you that, uh, you know, this how we will get all of these properties. Next, we will see that, OK, if I do not look at it from exponential time, uh, exponential distribution, if I look at it like from the starting itself that, you know, it is a Poisson distribution follows Poisson arrivals. Services are also done in a Poisson manner. So in that case, how will your system behave? And you will see that in both cases, this Markov property comes into picture. Here we will show it as a discrete time Markov chain and there also it will be a discrete time Markov chain, but it will be in a different way. So we will see how it works out and you will see in both the cases it will converge to the same property that we are trying to show here. OK, so let us see here that. Um, OK, whenever we are so we came to this conclusion that you know we are looking at the time so therefore we will say that okay it is a continuous time mark of chain okay but um, we have to look at the system uh, in steady state right so we have to see or we have to understand the steady state behavior of the system okay so that is why what we will do is that that we will analyze the arrivals sorry 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 uh, sorry we will analyze the arrivals and we will see the system with that with arrivals or with departures that is with the value change in value of the nt how it is behaving so that is why now we consider it as a discrete time markov chain and we observe these values over time t okay so we observe nt at discrete time points that is 0 delta 2 delta 3 delta and so on to t okay where delta is very small so at each of these time points that you are seeing now that is 0 delta 2 delta 3 delta you're basically looking at the system and seeing that what is the value of nt okay so that is what we are now doing we are just observing the system and we are seeing that um uh, what is the state of the system how many nt's are there okay so uh, here we have just put some variables. So let NK be the number of customers in the system at time K delta. 
and uh, by definition uh, the steady state probabilities of nk given k equals to 0 1 and so on will be same as that of nt t greater than equals to 0 okay so this is just through steady state probabilities now let's get to the transition probability okay so transition probability for a markov chain uh, process okay it is given as pij equals to p of nk plus 1 equals to j given nk equals to i what does this mean that uh, you have j arrivals at time k plus 1 okay so nk plus 1 means at k plus 1 at time how many arrivals have been there in your system so probability that uh, at time k plus 1 you have j arrivals given that at time k you had i arrivals okay so that means that is the probability of transitioning from a state if if you say that you know um, if i have five jobs in the system then i am at state five if i have zero jobs in the system then i, I am uh, at state zero okay so you numbered the uh, state as per how many arrivals are here starting from that so let us just assume in that way first so transitioning from the ith state to the jth state so probability that you transition from a state where you when you had i arrivals to a state when you have j arrivals so that is given by probability that at time k plus one you have uh, j items or j arrivals given that at time k you had i arrivals so this is given as the transition probability of the markov chain formulation okay now um, this is how we look at this system okay so this is the starting here so you have no jobs in the system you have zero jobs in the system now what can happen what can happen you can have first you can have no arrivals right so if you do not have no arrivals so in the next time instance you will still be in the same state okay so what is the probability what is the transition probability that you will be uh, in the same state or you will uh, you are currently having zero arrivals and in the next time also next time instance also you are having uh, zero arrivals only so that is given by this this is the transition probability for being in state zero only okay now what can be the other possibility uh, the other possibility is that you can have one arrival okay so that is given by this this is the transition probability i'll show you how we we'll, we are getting the transition probability but uh, let me first uh, explain this part so from 0 to 1 you are going through a transition and that is given by lambda delta okay so this is the transition probability to go from state 0 to state 1 and then how else will you have zero number of arrivals in your system? For example, you had only one job in your system. Uh, there was only one arrival. You solved that uh, job and then that job has departed. So now you will have no arrivals. Uh, sorry, no jobs in your system, assuming that you had no arrivals. So that is for, so from this state, you can have one departure. That is, it was served. So you can have one departure and you can go to this state zero okay so this is uh, the transition probability here similarly for the, all the other states you can see that you, we have a transition being done here that is to stay in that particular state or you have an arrival or you have a departure from the pre, uh, next state okay so uh, this kind of you know uh, representation of our markov chain uh, model that we have uh, basically we are trying to represent here this is known as a birth death process okay Achha. um is this part clear to everybody until this one yes ma'am okay okay so let me just show you how we are getting these values hmm. 
Achha. So what we are first looking at, we are looking at P00. That means you are having no arrivals. That is arrival is also, is also equals to zero and probability of departure that is also equals to zero. OK, so. What do we know about this arrival equals to zero? From here we know that how to find it. We know that it is equal to one minus lambda delta plus O delta. So we can write it as P of one minus lambda delta plus O delta. Now similarly for departures, just the lambda will change to mu and you can. Oh, sorry, sorry. This is not probability. Very sorry. Hmm. Similarly, we can see that, you know, um, for the departure also lambda will be changing uh, to mu because that is the rate that we are looking at. So one minus mu delta plus O delta. Similarly, you will get this value also. Now you can simply just do the calculations. Delta will still be small and then finally you will get the value that we are all looking for. That is. Where did it go? Did I close it? Just a second. Huh. OK, so from here you will get the value that is one minus lambda delta plus O delta. OK, so now. All right. So now for P00, you get this value. Of course, for PII, I have shown you for PII. OK, so one minus lambda delta minus mu delta plus O delta. So you will get whatever I showed you the calculation from there. You will get one minus lambda delta minus mu delta plus O delta. OK, so these are the values and then following you will get PII plus one. How much value you will get? That means um, you know, what is the arrival? If uh, what is the probability of uh, uh, the probability that there has been an arrival. What is the probability that there has been no arrivals? That means there has been a departure. OK, so it's like this. OK, so so let me just show you for PII plus one. How do we represent it? This this just open close it. Hmm. Hmm. So that is for PII. OK, so let me just write it at this. I wanted to show you in this way. So this is for PII. Now PII plus one, that means there has been an arrival. OK, so that means P arrival equals to one and departure is equals to zero. OK, so we know from here, right? This one, if arrival equals to one, how do we represent it? So we basically represent it as lambda delta plus O delta times departure. So one minus mu delta. There has been no departure. OK, so that is the case that is here. Then again for probability of that there has been one departure I comma I minus one. So probability that arrival equals to zero times probability that departure equals to one. So that you know that if arrival equals to zero, how do we get this one minus lambda delta plus O delta times if departure equals to one, that means there has been a departure. So mu delta plus O delta. OK, so. With this, we will get all the values. OK, so if you just try to do the calculations, I'll not do further calculations. So from here you will get all of these values. OK. That means the probability that there has been either any arrival or any departure that is P00 that is given by 1 minus uh, lambda delta plus O delta. PII will represent what? That is you are in currently in state I and um, there has been. So when PII is the case now, then you can see. See what can happen. That means PII I means any state. OK. So what can happen? Either there has been an uh, no arrival or 
there has been no departure from this system. So you are basically going from this state to another state or there can be one more one more uh, uh, situation, right? That is both has occurred. OK, arrival has also occurred. Departure has also occurred in this particular state. OK, so that's what PII basically represents. So at the end of the day, you have uh, like whatever state you were there, you are still in that state. OK, so there can be many possibilities in that case. So that's why um, you know, we had put that there. That is probability that there has been that arrival is equal to zero. Departure is equal to zero. Uh, with that, we had put it to make it simply simple. But if there is the situation that you know your uh, arrival is also there, departure is also there, and both are there at the same time, so then it will become a much more complicated scenario. We are not going into that much of complications in this case. So that is why I had shown you as probability that arrival equals to zero and departure is also equals to zero. Okay, so this is the Markov chain formulation that we are having. Now, hmm. all right. So from this, uh, we will have to now start looking at further processes. Okay. So we are looking at a steady state distribution, right? We want to always get the steady state distribution for these kind of systems. So first, we let that P n is equal to limit. K tends to infinity P of N K equals to N. OK, that is in steady state. You can write it as limit T tends to infinity N T equals to N. We have already seen this in the previous slides. OK, when we were looking at um, the transition probabilities, right? So um, P N. That means N number of items or N number of arrivals in uh, your uh, system. So probability that there are N arrivals in your system. So that can be given by limit k, k tends to infinity and k equals to n is equal to in steady state. It will be equal to limit t tends to infinity and t equals to n. OK, so now some observations. So let u is the number of times the state has changed from n to n plus one state n to state n plus one. That means n arrivals to n plus one arrivals during zero to t time. And V is the number of times the state has changed from N plus 1 to N during 0 to T departures. Basically, so in this case, what will happen when you see this for a very long time? OK, that is, you know, what is the number of times the state has changed from um, N to N plus 1 uh, during a particular time in the interval? And the number of times when the state has changed from N plus 1 to N during a particular time interval? then uh, we will find in a long run that mod of u minus v is less than equals to one okay so this is a property now we will see why this is coming into picture because it will be used here okay so now see mod of u minus v is less than equals to one you will see this with these transition probabilities okay now uh, mod of u minus v is less than equals to one when we see it for a long time it is a very small value you know less than equals to one so what we do is we simply try to assume that okay let us assume that we are having equal arrivals and distribution so asymptotically we assume that u equals to v okay so how what can we write here we can write that p n lambda delta plus o delta is equal to p n plus 1 mu delta plus o delta. OK, please see here we are looking at arrivals and departures. So p n lambda delta plus o delta is equal to p n plus 1 mu delta plus o delta. OK, so as delta will tend to 0, this equation we can write as p n lambda is equal to p n plus 1 mu. And we in general in Q and KD, we write lambda by mu as the server utilization okay that means how efficient your system is that is given by rho and rho is equal to lambda by mu what is the arrival rate divided by what is the service rate okay so from this statement you can write pn plus one is equal to rho pn okay so that means the probability that you are having n plus one arrivals in a um, 
particular time or oh, in your system in a particular time that is equal to the service rate times the probability that you have n jobs in your system or n arrivals in your system. Okay, let me say it as n jobs in your system. Okay, let's not get into n arrivals that will uh, introduce confusion. So probability that you have n plus one jobs in the system is equal to row times probability that you have n jobs in the system. So that is this. Now from this you can recursively obtain these values. That is probability that you have one job in the system is equal to rho times P of zero. That is no jobs in the system. Similarly for P2 you will get rho times P1 which can be further written as rho square P0 and so on. So from this you will get P of n is equal to rho power n times P0. I hope that this is pretty clear from here how we are getting this that is Pn is equal to rho power n times P0 where n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 1, so on. Okay. So now uh, we equate the total probability to 1. Of course, total probability will always be equal to 1. So we just simply equate this that is P0 plus P1 plus P2 and so on to, uh, to be equal to 1. And what we will get 1 equals to P0 plus P1 we can write as rho P0, P2 we can write as rho square P0 and so on. So we will get it as P0 times 1 plus rho plus rho square plus so on. Okay. Again, this is a kind of Taylor series expansion. You can also write it as P0 times 1 by 1 minus rho. Okay. So you will get this. So you are already equating this with 1. So you will get P0 equals to 1 minus rho. So here we had written Pn is equal to rho power n times P0. So from there you can write Pn is equal to rho power n times 1 minus rho. So this is how you will find out that what is the probability that there are n jobs in the system and that is equal to rho power n times 1 minus rho and this is for only an mm1 cube. Okay. So now uh, in the previous slides, if you see, okay, in the previous classes, we had written that n is equal to summation n is equal to 0 to infinity n p n. Okay, in steady state, we could get this. Okay, so please go back to those slides and then you will find out. So n is equal to summation n equals 0 to infinity n p n. So what is equation 3? This is equation 3, right? p n is equal to rho power n 1 minus rho. So from equation 3 we can write so this is Pn no we can just simply put Pn here uh, the value of Pn from equation 3 here. So that is n is equal to summation n equals 0 to infinity n rho power n 1 minus rho. So this gives you this value. Okay you just take this one out 1 minus rho and uh, rho. You can just take these two things out of the summation and just put this equal to uh, this as n equals 1 to infinity n rho power n minus 1. Okay, so now how do we calculate this value? This though is very simple, this we know, and this one is what we need to find out. Okay, so we need to calculate the value of summation of n equals to 1 to infinity n rho power n minus 1. So for this, what do we need to do? We need to consider the following expression. We have already seen this is the Taylor series expansion 1 by 1 minus rho is equal to 1 plus rho plus rho square plus rho cube and so on. Okay, so if we differentiate both the sides with respect to rho, then what we will get, we will get 1 by 1 minus rho square, rho whole square, sorry, that is equal to 1 plus 2 rho plus 3 rho square plus so on. Okay, so this is the value that will be equal to so this is also equal to summation of n equals 1 to infinity n rho power n minus 1 okay please look at this this is also equal to summation of n equals to 1 to infinity n rho power n minus 1 okay we are actually about to find this value summation of n equals 1 to infinity n rho power n minus 1 so now we put this value of n rho power n minus 1 into this equation that is n is equal to summation n equals 0 to infinity n p n. So that we will get as 1 minus rho times rho uh, times 1 by 1 minus rho whole square and that is equal to rho by 1 minus rho. So essentially the number of jobs in the system 
for an mm1 q is given by rho by 1 minus rho okay so what do we know about rho rho is also equal to lambda by mu okay that is the server server utilization or service utilization factor so that is rho equals to lambda by mu if we put in equation 6 that is this one you will get n is equal to lambda by mu minus lambda so for your course see i am showing you the derivation so that you understand how we get you know how we get all these values of you know mm1q and all that okay just to see that how the analysis is done okay but for your course for doing numericals you will need to you know uh, know what are these values okay so suppose there is a question as to uh, you know um, find out the uh, average number of jobs that will be in a system given that these are the properties of your mm1q okay lambda is this mu value is this and all that okay so then you have to find out by using this formula that is n is equal to lambda by mu minus lambda that what is the average number of jobs in the system okay and also there are further properties that we will see okay so so first we found out that what is the average number of jobs in the system then let us see the relationship between this row uh, that is lambda and mu okay so these are the average uh, number of jobs in the system that is n and rho okay so n is equal to rho by 1 minus rho okay so rho will of course it is a factor so it will vary it will vary from 0 to 1 okay so you can see that lambda okay if lambda tends to mu that means if lambda if it if rho tends to 1 okay so if lambda tends to mu in that case the number of customers that is waiting will increase that means the number of jobs that are in the system and waiting for service that is going to increase okay as it tends to one so for a steady state okay um if you remember the properties of queuing theory when i had told you in the beginning of starting queuing theory that said there are some properties that we need to maintain when we are analyzing a queuing system so for that we need to see uh, or we will see here that you know as this value is smaller okay that means when lambda is less than mu in that case you have lower number of waiting customers okay so that is why we say that in steady state when we try to when we want to analyze um, a queuing system okay then one of the most important properties that we first look at for steady state for a queuing system is that that lambda should be less than mu because as lambda tends to mu your rho will tend to one and your number of customers that are waiting in the system will keep on increasing okay and that will not be a steady state okay so this is um, the implication that we get and uh, as you can see that as we are seeing more and more stuffs here we are actually going back to each one of the properties and it is like a not giving uh, being given to each of the properties that we have studied earlier okay that why we have, we were talking about those properties earlier So this is what it is. Now this is the derivation of the other properties that is T, W and N, Q. Okay. So T is N by lambda. Okay. We have already seen earlier. So this is uh, T that is what is the average amount of time that your um, job has to wait in the system. And that is given by, so by little slaw you will get now that is, um, n by lambda okay you have what is your little slow what is the average number of jobs in the system that is equal to arrival rate times the average uh, amount of time the job has to wait in the system so from there uh, you will get that is the average amount of time a job has to wait in the system is equal to n by lambda n you are already aware of lambda by mu minus lambda and this is already one by lambda so you get 1 by mu minus lambda here okay then w is equal to what is the amount of time uh, that your system uh, the 
what is the uh, amount of time that your job has to wait in the queue okay that is given by w so that means what is the total amount of you can how how can you find out what is the total amount of time that your job has to wait in the system minus what is the time that it waits for servicing in the server okay so what is the amount of time taken for servicing at the server so that is given by t minus 1 upon mu so that is that comes out as rho by mu minus lambda so just use this value here so 1 by 1 by mu minus lambda minus 1 by mu and that gives you rho by mu minus lambda similarly uh, you can find out that uh, what is the average number of jobs in the queue in your system okay so that also you can find using little slaw that is arrival rate times the uh, average amount of time uh, the job waits in the queue that is lambda w lambda times so that means lambda times rho by mu minus lambda so from there you will get it as rho square divided by 1 minus rho okay so these are the most important values that you will have to uh, find out when you are looking for a queuing system that is starting from this value that is what is the average number of jobs in your system and what is the average amount of time spent by a job in your system what is the average amount of time spent by a job in the queue and what is the average number of jobs in the queue of the system okay so these four are very important values that you will get so now if i ask you that suppose your router is uh, behaving as an mm1 queue the arrivals uh, are following a poisson process and the service time distribution follows exponential distribution uh, and of course um, let us for the time being assume that you know you have um, infinite buffer size okay that means infinite system capacity so with that you can represent your router um, as or the buffer at the router as an mm1 queue and you will be able to find out all of these values that is if a packet has to arrive in your router then uh, how much time on an average does it have to wait uh, how many packets on an average will be there in the router hmm. um and then um, all the other values that is how many packets will be there on an average uh, in the queue of the router and how many packets um, or how much time will a packet has to spend in the queue of that router on an average okay so given all the value all of these values that you get you can actually then find out many other values right so we you can analyze many other things of this uh, particular system like we had started with the switch architecture and then we were looking for you know um now what if there is no buffer then how does this system work and we had found out that uh, it gave us 63% of utilization okay 63% efficient system that was but uh, if you have buffers at the inputs okay then how do we find out that uh, how much efficient that system is and with that we had started this queuing analysis and we had uh, tried to find out that um, okay how uh, this system would look like and um, if we have buffers at the input now you can think of that you know if you have buffers at the input side then uh, how much time will a packet have to wait until it gets a chance to be put into the uh, output buffer okay or how many packets on an average will be waiting at the input port uh, at each input port uh, before it can be served so from these values only you can uh, find out that what will be the capacity of your entire um, switch okay what will be the entire utilization uh, switch utilization for you so from there you can find out that what is it so uh, in the last few classes we had seen that you know 63% is the utilization for the scenario where there are no buffers and the theoretical utilization uh, maximum theoretical utilization for an input buffer uh, for a switch with an input buffer is 58% so now since we know that you know how to analyze a queuing system and how do we get these values now we will actually now be able to find out that you know what are um, 
or how to find out or how to find out the capacity of such a system or how to find out the theoretical maximum utilization for input buffering. So today I have finished this um, queuing analysis for an MM1Q, but that is using um, that is using uh, you know the exponential distribution part and you know considering so from there we have considered okay that this looks like a Poisson process uh, whether it follows the properties of Poisson processes or not and then we arrived to a system that was that looked like a birth death process okay now tomorrow's class what I will do is I will start with certain properties of systems OK, so like starting with stochastic processes and then um, Markov chain processes and um, then finally I will get to birth death processes and in that class what I will do is I will start with the assumption that this system looks like a birth death process and then we will arrive to these same values. OK, so I will show you that you can either do it in this way that is, you know, you start with exponential distribution and then you arrive to the uh, conclusion that okay it looks like a birth death process now okay once you find out that what how the arrivals and departures are happening all right uh, and then you finally get to these values or you can also do it in this way that you start with the assumption that okay this actually follows the properties of birth death processes and from there let us see that how we get into the different uh, values OK, what are the different uh, steady state transitions and then we will get into these values. OK, so that is what we will see. Then next what we will see is we will see different variations of these queues. We have only seen MM1 right now, so there are many variations of it. You will have MMM that means many servers are there. M servers are there. You will have MM1B that is uh, the system is having a limited capacity which happens in the real time. And then you will have further values MG1, MD1, etc. So one, two, three or four maximum variations will be there that I will show you. And then after that, we will start with, you know, our input queuing and all that. OK, so. Uh, this is the end of today's class, so I have done all of this that you can see in this part of uh, the slide. I mean this entire module. This is taken from Bertsikas and Gallagher Data Networks. OK, the book name is Data Networks and uh, authors are Bertsikas and Gallagher. If you want to look at the properties of Poisson processes, Markov processes, etc., the basic background properties that I was looking at, you can either look at Raj Jain or you can uh, for if you are further interested, you can look at uh, Robert Gallagher's book on stochastic processes, theory of applications. Uh, if you don't get this book, you can get his uh, lectures on YouTube also. He is a professor from MIT, so uh, you will get his lectures there. And um, Rajan's book I've already uh, mentioned to all of you. You will get his slides also. They are widely available online. So um, Rajan's book is for the background process. And tomorrow's class that I'm going to take is entirely from Rajan. Okay. So this is the reference for today's class. So I hope that the class was clear to all of you. So if you have any questions, you can ask me or otherwise. Oh, I have taken so much of time. Sorry, sorry. So I think you guys can 